Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be... <laughs> it's my little brother. Today we're going to be setting up my new XL Vanguard 395. Already done it once, just to put the wheels on and you know get used to it. It's really heavy so I've got a, um, it's uh, like a sack barrow I think they're called, but it's very good for you know getting it around because Yeah, go, go sit down. It's very, very good for you know getting it around. Um, the, the other bag, so you've got the smaller bag over there, which is basically like the um, aluminium floor, and that's that's what goes in the bottom. And then the big bag, I'll show you what I've put in what bag just when you pack it up, you know, what goes best where. Um, the only thing that isn't in the bag is the two wheels and the pump. The wheels, I got the um. On the XL website, there's three options for sizes on their own wheels. I think I got the middle one, it's like 250 mil, uh, something like that, but I'll show you then. Uh, these ones, they're, uh, they're all right, they've got these two pegs. Basically, they slide up, so I'll show you when they go on, when we get it all pumped up. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna be using the pump that the actual bat boat came with. I've got a red paddleboard pump that I use which is double chamber so it's a lot quicker but we'll just use the stock one for this and I'll show you like real time how how quick it is all right so just to show you what I keep in each bag in the main bag here for the boat I've got the just camera out the two small um, so like pegs that hold the floorboards in properly the repair kit the oars these are the oars it's come in two pieces you've got a handle on the paddle receipt stuff spare rubber that's it yeah and obviously the boat and this one you keep all of the floorboards plus the seats and the uh, the long the long floor supports so I'm just going to get unpacking that now One quick tip I would suggest is, this is the rope that comes in. Um, when you get the boat out, you'll find it attached to the, the bow eye um, at the front of the boat. I just use it to tie these two handles together. So when you roll the boat up, you'll find you need to have the boat as tight as po possible in with each other. So when you're rolling it, you can just use this rope to tie these handles together. Keeps it all nice and tight. Um, and then possibly one at the front, I've just got a reusable zip tie here. As you can see, I've only pumped it up a little bit. There's still obviously lots to give, but you only want to give it enough so it gets the shape of it. Next step is to get the floorboards in. I think there's five pieces. I'll just show you what they are. There is stickers on them. As you can see that one there. Just bring this around. So this one's got a hole in it. And there's, I'm not sure if you can see. Inside, so this is only on the Vanguard, there's this internal chamber, which I'll show you what this looks like. So inside, there's this sort of chamber, sort of like a, a kite, slim kite shape. And that's the um, the keel. So that's what will give the pointy bottom of the boat. Um, and once the floorboards are on top, obviously that push the keel down. But this bit, it's, not, it's still attached to the boat, but this is like flapping. So you just want to make sure you get that hole, the, the valve lined up with that hole. So you get that in now. And you'll be able to feel this. This is grippy side, this is a smooth side. It's obviously grippy side up. And the stickers will be pointing up as well. Um, you just want to make sure you push this in. Enough. Let's 
you'll be able to check that the corners of this are in the corner. So I've got the, the actual board in the corners of the bow and then you can just sort of shimmy this back until it roughly lines up the hole. Next I'll do the, the rear one. Don't touch that offer. So this rear one, as you can see, it's got the fuel tank strap on. Um, number five's in that corner. <coughs> Bless me. Number five points forwards, so you can read it if you're looking up the boat like that. Then we do, put one side in, there we go. So obviously you just want to be mindful of the sharp edges, um, you'll also see these, so they need to go underneath, well the board needs to go around. Can you get out of the way? So you go, the board's under those cones. It's nice but up against the edge. And then we'll do two, four and then three will slot in slightly differently. So it's self, pretty self-explanatory, they just sort of slot in, it's like a tongue and can't remember what it's called, it's a bit like um, wooden floorboards. So, and you just want to make sure it's roughly lined up, it's not too far over to one side, or an angle, and the numbers sort of line up best you can. Go. Same deal again. There we go. Now number three, slightly harder obviously you have to get the tongue and join thing both sides so what you do connect it pointing down so it connects into two so you just slide it in normal you have to sort of get in your knees oh, it's so bright I'm gonna get some glasses alright got the pit vipers on so Make sure that connects in. It's a lot easier to do this with two people. Once that's in nicely, just bend down here. Pull these two up, form a triangle, and pull it up. Obviously, there's going to be a gap here. Get that side in, and you can try and shimmy into place. Line them up best you can. So we'll make sure both sides are clear. Arthur, you pull the tube back. The tube here, pull it back. There you go. And then, there you go. So that's all nice. Obviously, if you're standing on this, the boards are going to creak and move. And that's what. That's what these are for. So, uh, there's not a particular side, but you don't want to go butt up to the edge, so there's some reinforced sort of sheets of rubber here. It's very hot. Um, 
you want to have, make sure there's enough room for the short one, which is this. Make sure there's enough room for this short one to cover this joint. And then basically these long ones are going to cover these two joints here. Um, so you'll see the cross section here sort of points down. Now if you imagine this is the tube of the boat, you want it pointing into the tube. And obviously that slat's going to be where the floor goes. Um, and then the flat bits on the floor. So with a ramp facing down here, it's going to go in this corner down here. I'll show you. You can always... So, fairly simple. Do it, slide it up. I'll show you a bit closer on the second one. I've got it lined up, the slats pointing down, so there's a ramp going down into the tube. Now, what you want to do is tip it up so that the ramp side's pointing up and then the flat side's coming up here. Get the groove onto the slats and then you just sort of roll it back. Sometimes if the plates are bending, it will uh, obviously cause issues. And then you just roll it back until it's there. No touch. And then just slide it in a bit. Same deal with these ones. So that's those bits. Once the floor's all in properly, then you can fully inflate the boat. Uh, I believe the pressure is 3.6 psi or 0.25 bar. And then the keel, which is the floor one, that one's 6 psi. So it's got sort of three tubes. So you've got that tube, that tube the bow section and then the keel, so four four bits in total. And yeah, you just sort of do the two side bits first, then the bow and then the keel at the end. So we're gonna get a little time lapse of that. Right, we got the boat fully inflated. Everything's on the keel. The keel's inflated as well. So only steps now is just all the accessories. Stuck an engine on it, it'd work now. However, Gotta go all the way. So, the oars I've already put them on. It's just a simple screw that, and then the oar comes off. Let's get this stick, it goes on. This also is a bit of a cleat. Um, obviously, not very good, but yeah, the handles as well have got somewhat of a wrap around them, so you can use them as cleats. But at the end of the day, you're better off just sort of tying a line around the handle if you really need to. It's not much use for that anyway. Though. So the oars come up, fold in, like so. Sometimes this clip is a bit, a bit stiff, but the, so I have to sort of pull it apart, wiggle it in. There you go. Same with this one. Now for the seats. The seats are pretty simple. Um, as you'd imagine. Over the seats, as you can see, it's just just that with a bit of thick thick rubber here. So you can see it's just a bit thick on one side, and that just slots in. Push it down there. Voila! <coughs> Next up, we've got the wheels. Um, this is a sort of interesting bit. So the other day I got it all out, I had to bolt these in. A little bit dark back here. So all I've done is I've got these uh, just car washing sponges, put two slits in. Essentially, I'll show you the wheels. I also put this toe eye in. Uh, there's two, one on each side. Some people have told me it's um, meant to go on the other side. So that's the bolt for it. Let's turn this down again. 
um, that's the bolt for it. So apparently it's meant to go on this side and hold the engine, but uh, I don't know about that. The only other thing, like major alteration, there's two bolts, there's wheels, one's there and one is inside. So you just gotta take this cone off, cut a little bit of the um, sort of grid out of that. Um, another cool feature, you got the auto baler here. You just lift that up when the inside fills with water. Uh, no water comes in because there's a rubber mat down there. So I'm just going to stick the wheels on. So the wheels, fairly simple. Just lift this bit of motor up. Let's see if we can do this. Um, I've never done it like this before. So I'm going to have to do this one first. And basically, um, there's the hook at the bottom. So you put it in like that, push this bit down. So there's that, and then you push it down, slot that one in push it up and it clicks in. So, we'll see how this goes. There's one. There's two. And there you have it. Unfortunately, when the um, so when you go to put the wheels up, I had to put these so low down on the transom because otherwise it sort of bends back to come out. So you have to push it in. Um, it was getting caught on the bolt, so it had to be low. But now, when you go to put it in, it has to bend forward, so you you got to sort of push it in manually with your hands. Other than that, there you go. Um, I'll show you some short b-roll took on my phone of when I had the engine on I'm not going to bother putting it on now because I don't see the point um, and that's pretty much it there's your vanguard um, I'll just give you a quick tour around of nice features it has um, I've been told older versions had handles on the inside of the cone here um, sit, but see this one doesn't uh, you've got grab handle here nice grab handle you've got nice um, sort of rail fenders grab handles all the way around on this rope you obviously your oars another grab handle there so there's two this side one on the sort of incline here at the bow you've got this nice roller i think it's every vanguard with a 395 and up so like the 420 and the 570 i think um but yeah everyone bigger than the 395 has this this is the 395 so there you have it down here you've got this handle it's got a sort of toe ring and a handle on there um, which also tells me you've also got these sort of toe eyes for if you're getting towed um, same same story around the other side on the inside obviously you've got that auto baler and the mat the um, end fuel tank you've got sort of an eye there you don't have one on this this side however it's only that eye there you've got your chambers and an eye there for your anchor. Two seats, that's pretty much it. It says it holds up to seven people. Here's the specs. Uh, you know, C-class um, weather. Max it can take is 780 kilograms. Max horsepower is 25, takes six people. And there you go, there, there it is. Um, I'm looking, I might just get a rod, rod holder for the side of the engine. So I don't want to put too many holes in the transom. I've used aquarium sealant I got from work. Uh, like just, you know, normal pet aquarium um, sealant for the holes I drilled. Just to, you know, make sure there's not getting the wood rod. Because it is wood inside the transom. I think it's like fiberglass and then wood. I'm not sure. But there you have it. Um, tips I have for dis disassembly. Um, pretty much just take it all apart. Obviously, I put it in... Um, what I showed you at the start with the bag wise uh, hopefully we'll take it out next weekend um, other than that for disassembly yeah as I said just um, the grab handles on the side you can use the rope it comes with to uh, just sort of set that up and quick tip for anyone wanting to do sort of like uh, you know float float towing I'll just show you I'll do that Now this is the rope it comes with, obviously you can get your own rope 
quick little little lesson here. No, leave it. Put it down. Leave the rope. I've got a bit more rope as well. Um, but if you do put the tow eyes on the outside, obviously let's imagine you've got your engine here and you want to tow, say, I don't know, bodyboard or whatever. Obviously it's not the best boat for that, but it can do it. So what you want to do, pull this through. I'm going to show you how to do a bowling. So I grab the rope, so you've got your, um, your tag end and your normal rope. And basically you just grab it, come over the top, grab the rope, do a twist like that, so you end up with a sort of a loop like that. You come round that, I don't know if you can see that, round that end, round it and back into the hole. Just give you a bit, a bit of a brief look there. And then sort of pull that. And there you have a nice strong bowling. That's not going to cinch up like a sort of lasso. And then as well, you want to do one on this side. So just sort of long enough that it's not going to get into the propeller. So about, about that. And there you have it. So that's, and then you can do another bowling around that. Um, sort of as if this was the eye. You just come out, you know, around, do your bowling there. Can you, can you move please? <laughs> and then there you have a nice sort of toe and that will allow you to move around like that as well. And it shouldn't go into the propeller. It's just a nice, same thing with the front as well. Um, you can obviously use it as like a sort of harness. I'll leave a link to, I saw a really nice video of, um, I think it's Sib Fishing Adventures UK. He did a nice video of, um, with like a harness that he made for the front, which I've tried and it works quite well. So I'll leave him to describe that one. It's, it's really work, works really well for especially this sort of size of boat. And it's not, not the hardest thing to pull. I mean, obviously with an engine, it's gonna balance out a little bit. But that's probably like 30 kilograms. That's about 30 kilograms what you're lifting at the front. The whole boat itself weighs like 80 plus an engine. That's like nearly 100. 160 sort of thing but you know I'm not the strongest as it is but you can still you can definitely definitely pull it yourself obviously a bit of help would uh, wouldn't go amiss but there you have it thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you in a couple of weeks and we'll take it out down the Solent um, hopefully launch from like South Sea go around there for a bit just give it a sort of test run a bit of a run in I've got a Mercury 15 horsepower for anyone who's wondering and uh, yeah, see you next time.